Hey guys, so it's Najee here. Uh, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. I am so glad that you have stopped by. Um, if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back to hear whatever it is that God has shared with me for this time and this season. So guys, happy 4th of July. Um, I have just gotten back off of a little mini vacation with my kids. I decided to just take them to Charleston and to the beach, um, visit some family, do a little um, touring. And we had an amazing time besides some foolishness with the hotel. I swear, it's like it's so hard to get good customer service these days. But nonetheless, we made the best of it. And... I'm just excited to now get ready to go and spend more time with friends and family for um, the holiday, get some good food. So I wanted to share what God shared with me on yesterday during my study time. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into that. Um, let's see. Do I have any announcements or anything to share? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, let's just say this. First and foremost, any eyewear that you guys see me wear, for those of you who are new here, not familiar with it, I have my own eyewear line. It's called Kingdom Vision. You can always find whatever pair that I'm wearing or the link will always be in the description box of each video. Okay, guys? So, I have on my red frames because I'm wearing red today. Not really wearing red, white, and blue, but just decided to wear red. So, so before getting started, I'm going to go ahead and get into a quick prayer. Okay, guys. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We invite you into this message. I thank you, Father, for sharing everything that you shared with me. I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to continue to be a vessel. Although I am not perfect, Father God, I thank you that you correct me and you lead me on a daily basis. You remove me, my selfishness, anything that is not of you, and you replace your Holy Spirit to correct and to guide on a daily basis, Father God. And I pray that you do the same for those who are watching this, this video, Lord God. Anything that is in this message that is for them, I pray that they receive it. I pray that they know that it is from you. They take it to you for confirmation, Father God. They remove the veil and they allow those blessings that you were trying to get to them to be uh, brought into their lives, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. So um, God started me out in uh, Numbers. Numbers chapter 33, verse 1. So I will read that uh, scripture here. It is labeled Israel's journey from Egypt reviewed. These are the journeys of the children of Israel who went out of the land of Egypt by their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. So as we go through this journey and things are being revealed, just as Moses shared what already happened in order to prepare for what God was doing, no matter where they moved or camped, the Lord was with them as he is with you and me. No matter where he tells us to move, no matter where he tells us to be still and be camped, he is with us the entire time, no matter how quiet he is, no matter how much we don't understand where we're supposed to be going, what we're supposed to be doing, he is there. There um, is always going to be a season where God is going to speak to us and give us direction. And then there's times where we may not hear anything. And if we don't hear anything, that just means that he wants us to be quiet. Um, not want us to be quiet. He wants us to be still. <laughs> Sometimes that does require us to be quiet. But he wants us to be still and know that he's there regardless of what it looks like, whether we are moving or whether we are camped. There is a pregnancy, a pregnancy, um, things that are being birthed, okay? A divine blessing being unveiled, just as in Genesis 1:28, And it reads, and God blessed them 
And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that move the upon the earth. So basically, in this, in this time frame, what he is wanting us to recognize that as we are going through this journey and things are being revealed to us, okay, things that are being revealed that have already happened and to prepare us for those things that are being unveiled, that are being um, birthed, we need to make sure, we need to make sure, okay, that we do not forget the things that God has placed over our spirits, over our hearts, the things that he has already spoken to us. Okay. Sometimes we may hear things that God has spoken to us. And as we are in the midst of the thing, as we're on that journey, we forget the things that has already been revealed, the things that have already happened that needed to happen in order to, to birth the new things that are coming. We forget so in Psalms 51, 5, it states, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. This basically just uh, references that how it's constantly affirmed in scripture of hereditary corruption and the innate proneness to sin in every child of man. So we must have a prayer of repentance to our Lord when we fall short, because we will fall short. So as we're going through this journey and as things begin to feel as if, as if it's hard, as if it's a strain, as if uh, we begin to become weary, we're looking for those things to be birthed that we know God has promised us and we're not seeing it. Sometimes in the midst of that, we fall into sin and we don't even recognize that we're falling into sin. Sin doesn't always mean an act of intentional um, betrayal or rebellion. Sin can sometimes just be our mindset, okay? We can fall into sin by coming out of an agreement with what God has already shown us and told us. We come out of an agreement by in our mind thinking, this isn't never going to happen. It's okay if it doesn't. When you know that God may have already spoken to you what he said he was going to do, what he said he was going to birth, what he's already revealed to you in order to prepare you for the things that are to come. He's already said to you that he's there. He's already shown you or given you some form of idea of what he's trying to do in your life. But right now you're in that waiting season. So while you're in that waiting season, you may allow your mindset to go into a negative state, to go into a form of depression, sadness, weariness, go into a uh, headspace of just feeling like God isn't there. God isn't talking to me. He isn't revealing these things to me. He's forgotten me. He's walked away from me. And without even realizing it, those things, when we come into the agreement of that mindset, it actually is allowing us to somewhat come into a, an agreement with what Satan has placed in our minds. Because those thoughts and that type of thought process did not come from our father. So where did it come from? It comes from the enemy in order to get you out of an agreement that God has already placed in your spirit. When you come out of an agreement with what God has already said is yours, what God has already said is coming and he's already revealed certain things to you, but we happen to get into our own way by thinking, okay, well, maybe what it was that God told me wasn't God. Maybe it was me. Maybe it's just because I want and desire these things so much that I thought it was God. And you begin to come out of the agreement that God has already said. Not even recognizing that you're coming into an agreement with what Satan wants for your life. In Proverbs 3, 12 through 14, it says, For who the Lord loves, he corrects. And in Proverbs 4, 1, it says, Hear, my children, the instructions of the Father, and give attention to no understanding. 
for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. So we, in this season, guys, as we are waiting for God to do the things that he has called to come and be birthed, we have to not forsake the law or we can forfeit our promise. We can forfeit the things that God is trying to birth. Some people may even be just taking a step back for fear and just not moving at all when he's not called you to be still. There is a season where he's may have called you to be still and just wait because you've already done what he's asked you to do. And then there is a season where he has called for you to be still or to move. Has he called you, as it says, to be camped out or has he called you to move? Now, having the Holy Spirit within empowers a man or woman with vitality and enthusiasm, making him or her a magnet to other people. The beauty comes from within and is manifested by pure motives and generous, unselfish spirit towards others. Jesus alone can establish such a wellspring of love when a woman or man yields their life to him. God is also calling from, for a form of modesty. He said modesty, a sensitive withdrawal from anything that is indelicate or impure. Throughout the Bible, lack of modesty is most often connected with an intent to commit sexual sin. Okay, so modesty, and I have spoken about modesty on a number of occasions in reference to how we should, um, as men or women, how we should present ourselves in a modest way, okay? And there are some people who think that, you know, um, modesty is, how can I say this? In this, in this term, the way that the Holy Spirit is, is revealing it, as it says, in an indelicate or impure way. So if you are someone who is presenting yourself to the world in a way that is impure, in a way that can cause another fellow uh, brother or sister in Christ to fall into sin, or you are presenting yourself in an impure way that um, is there for the purpose of sexual sin, then, of course, you know, that's an obvious. But some of us, the way that we dress, okay, we may have too much that's showing. We may have, um, we may be wearing something that um, doesn't leave anything to the imagination. That can come across as being impure and indelicate. So I think it's just a matter of, for example, in, in the Bible, there is no detailed description of, okay, you need to dress this way. You need to dress that way. It's a matter of knowing and being convicted by the Holy Spirit if it's something that you're doing um, or wearing that that is impure, okay? Because it doesn't go specifically in terms of that in the Bible as far as, okay, you you need not show your shoulders or you need not show your legs or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, now for the scriptures that people are stating in reference to, um, now I won't go into that. I won't go into that. Just pretty much for the most part, when you have a relationship with God, what I can say is that the Holy spirit will convict you on what it is that is improper and impure. Sometimes you may not even know why, because in your, you know, your fleshly state, you may look at it like, oh God, okay, God, there's nothing wrong with this. Why do I feel like this is something you're telling me I shouldn't wear? The Holy Spirit will convict you the same way the Holy Spirit may convict someone else for not going out and, you know, getting a tattoo or not going out and drinking a glass of wine. He may convict one person but the Holy Spirit may not um, 
may not dwell in every person who says that they are a Christian because if they are living in sin, okay, if you are living a life that is focused around sin and you are really not living a life where you are trying to live purely and you're not living a life where you're trying to live righteously, then the Holy Spirit is not going to convict you off of the little things. But if you're someone who is constantly uh, seeking God's approval in everything, you are constantly at God's feet, constantly in prayer, constantly doing the things that you want, um, that God wants for you, then he will convict you and you will receive and, and notice that he's convicting you on certain things, okay? Now, as I mentioned several times uh, about seeing the number four, okay, 444, 44, 44, and I saw it extremely um, heavy on yesterday, uh, like out of control heavy on my way back from out of town. I saw it on everything from billboards to license plates to um, exit signs to, I mean, just everywhere. And I'm just on the highway driving home. Now, what um, the Holy Spirit led me to in this, um, of course, I have previously stated that it means open doors. Um, and God revealed its meaning for why he has repeatedly shown this to me as well in Luke 24, 44. And it says, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. What all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. In verse 46, thus it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from one high. So basically, as it states, is that the Father is going to bring a, a stronger understanding so that you might, we may comprehend the scriptures. We may comprehend the scriptures like we never have before. He is opening the door for us to be able to comprehend and understand what we're reading and what it is he is wanting for us to see and understand in this season. So the same way that um, basically whenever there's people who ask about, you know, I never open my Bible because I never know where to start. I don't understand, you know, what it's telling me. I'm not sure what God is trying to say because this scripture, you know, the scripture seemed like it's from so long ago and it's not relating to me and whatever the case may be. People are just intimidated to open the Bible, which I was at one time as well, because I did not understand how it related to, to, to today. But once I realized, once I realized the Holy Spirit was with me, once the Holy Spirit lived inside of me, the moment I went into that Bible with expectations of hearing what God was saying was the moment that those scriptures began to speak to me, was the moment I began to comprehend exactly what those scriptures were saying, what they meant for today. And so right now, the Father is giving more and more revelation so that we are able to comprehend exactly what it is he is wanting. We're receiving more understanding in this season, okay? We are joint heirs. Galatians 3, 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? So as... <laughs> We need to understand, okay, Jesus, who Jesus is in our lives. And because of him dying on the cross for our sins, we are joint heirs. 
We are all sons of God through the faith in Jesus Christ. So through our faith in believing in him, okay, we are joint heirs. We are all sons of God. We all can possess this knowledge and this power through the Holy Spirit that is being um, placed upon the body of Christ right now. I know Christ dwells within me all the time, guiding me and inspiring me whenever I do or say anything. A light of which I caught no glimmer before comes to me at the very moment when it is needed. This was in my Bible. It was a quote. Um, I'm not sure who, what her name was, but I felt like that was so profound because he immediately turned me over to that. And that's what you know, was attached to what he's already speaking about is when you know that the Holy Spirit is with you. The, pow the power that you possess, the power that you possess through the Holy Spirit and understanding that you are a joint heir, understanding that as you are moving, as you are camped, wherever it is God has you, knowing that he is there with you, okay? Do not allow yourself to fall into a sinful nature because of your thoughts, because of your lack of faith. If there's anything that you need to repent for, you need to have an open heart to repent for it. I had to go through the same process on yesterday. Because I just felt as if my spirit was being attacked over the past few days. And I felt like my mindset was going into this negative space. And I had to bring myself back down and say, you know what, Father, I repent. I repent, I repent for having a mindset of thinking or feeling like I'm doing this alone. Or for thinking or feeling like where you have me that I'm confused and you you aren't doing what you said you were going to do. Wherever your mindset is going, even if you don't speak those things out of your mouth, you got to be careful about how you are viewing what God is doing in your life. Because even if you're not speaking it out of your mouth, God knows that there is a lack of faith there by what you're thinking. We need to be sure because most of the time, the things that we think, we actually speak them out of our mouths and we don't even realize that we've spoken them out of our mouths. We don't even realize that we have just come into an agreement with what the enemy has already said was, was you know, what the, th the thoughts that the enemy has implanted into your mind. Sometimes we don't even realize that we have spoken those things and come into agreement with what the enemy has already said to us or try to speak over our lives. Is it easy? Not always, absolutely not. It is definitely not always easy. Warfare, I know that there is some warfare that is going on because I have felt it over the past two days. Um, you may be feeling a sense of Having people in your surroundings, whether they are close to you or people that may not be close to you, who are coming against you, who are finding a reason to dislike something about you, something you said, something you did. And it is an attempt or an attack of the enemy that is trying to get you to second guess what it is that the father is trying to do in your life. If for any reason you allow those things that were spoken to you, said to you, done to you, to cause you to second guess whether or not God is there or to cause you to second guess what it is that God is doing in your life and you need to repent, I'm asking you to repent right now. Come out of the agreement with the enemy. I need you to repent for these things. 
I need you to recognize the doors that God is opening right now. As it said in Luke 24, 44, again, remember, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Again, while I was still with you. Okay, even though it doesn't feel like he's there. It says it here. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. That all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses. <laughs> and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Guys, I don't know everything. I'm far from perfect. I don't even know everything I need to know about the word of God. I'm still learning. I consider myself a baby in Christ. I just try to be as obedient as possible when, I, when there is a word that he's given me and sharing it. I still have to go to, to the Father with uh, questions and concerns about what is he trying to reveal. There are many times that I have nights up of crying and, and, and pleading with God to reveal to me what he has for me, what it is that he's wanting me to know and do in this time. I share the things that he wants me to share because I don't want anyone else to be um, in a headspace of confusion. Although you still need to go to God, although he still needs to, you know, reveal things to you individually. It is important that we all have a relationship with him individually. Because one thing that may be for you may not be for the next person. And there may be multiple things that may be confirmation in this word that are completely different for each of you. Repentance. repentance okay guys i hope this made sense to you guys because i get word in different chunks as i am studying and and i write them um pretty much how i think that god is trying to reveal it into more of a um a message that goes together okay typically it always still has something to do with each other and then sometimes he might just flip the script and go to something completely opposite but for the most part i think it's pretty obvious what he is revealing here okay we just need to make sure that we understand that no matter where we are in our journey because we are all in different places in our journey that he's with us okay understand that he's with us whether you're being still or whether you're moving I don't want to sound like I'm repeating myself over and over again, but I'm just trying to get that through um, to people. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So even if in our mindset, we might think that he's not there. We may not. We may think that he's not. He's not doing things behind the scenes, but he is. Even if he told us to be still, that doesn't mean he's being still. Okay. <laughs> He is still moving. He's always moving. Those divine blessings are being unveiled. Those divine blessings that he has told us about and has already um, revealed to us, okay? They are being unveiled. They are being unveiled. My children, the instructions of the Father. Hear, my children, the instructions of the Father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. So in the wait or in the moving, 
as you're moving, as you're waiting, wherever you are, do not fall into sin. Remember the instructions that the Father has given you and do not forsake his law. Okay? All right, guys. I hope that this was um, a revelation of some sort in your life today. I thank you for taking the time out on this 4th of July to uh, listen to this message. And um, again, take it to God. Allow him to reveal to you what it is that he is wanting to do in your life today. Allow him to reveal to you what it is he is wanting you to take notice of. Allow him to reveal to you what part of your life right now that you need to repent from. I try to repent on a daily basis because I know that sometimes there are things that we may fall into, things that we may sin uh, against, and we may not even realize it. It may be something that we said or did, whether we came into an agreement with a conversation that someone else is having and it is gossip. OK. And we may have given our two cents. OK. Abba may be telling you to repent. And I've had to do the same thing because it is. Sometimes we do it unknowingly, especially if we have people in our lives that don't have a problem with continuously having a conversation about someone else's life and what they're doing, not doing, how they look, how they, you know, move, you know, and, and if that person is always revealing certain things to you, sometimes it can be a little hard for you to recognize, okay, let me change the subject or let me not engage in this conversation. Sometimes it's not for us to speak against them and what they're doing, just not to take part in it. OK, um, so I'm saying this just to say, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you in what area that you need to maybe pay attention to and make sure that um, we're not falling into any sin unnecessarily while we're waiting for these blessings to be unveiled and to be brought into our lives. Stay in a, in, a, in a place of repentance. Even <laughs> the enemy has even like any little small door, any little small door that some of us may feel like is not really that big. It may not be that big of a deal. It still is a small door that can allow the enemy to come in. It can be something as simple. And I am speaking about myself here, okay? Um, even on the way out of town, you know, where the enemy will speak to your ear and say, oh, it, you know, you're, you're driving a long way. It's okay. If you listen to a little, you know, R and B love songs, this and that, whatever the case may be. Right. And, um, I found myself having to repeatedly skip <laughs> multiple songs because they were speaking directly about sex. And rather than at that moment, me saying, I shouldn't be listening to this station. Let me turn back to what I typically listen to. I just would skip the song and keep listening to different things. And I'm like, the Holy Spirit convicted me. The Holy Spirit convicted me and I had to repent for it. And I had to also mention it to my, my children because it's one of those things where we are being looked at. We are being looked at. And our children will remember, okay, well, mom, you know, I don't definitely don't listen to anything where there's any cursing in it, but they pretty much know me that if there's something that may go into the, the space of any sexual, you know, mentioning or a little bit too much. Now I'm okay. I, you know, I really, when it comes to like old school, love songs where there is no mention of sex or anything like that it's just old school love songs like celine dion something like that it's it's clean um you know i will typically be okay with listening to that or jazz or something like that but the old school uh 90s r&b that i used to listen to 
when that thing when that stuff came up and it reminded me of my childhood that I used to listen to and love, I'm thinking to myself like, oh my God, I used to listen to this. My parents used to let me listen to this. And you know, we wonder why we had certain struggles when it came to dating and relationships and, you know, not knowing how to uh, remain pure because we were listening and feeding that, that stuff into our spirit. And so if we are not married and we are believing for marriage, then we can't feed things that are discussing sexual things into our spirit because what it will do is when it when someone else comes around the things that have been 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 um spoken into our spirit that we've listened to we won't even realize where the desires to be touched to be kissed all of these things will come from when someone comes into our life it will be harder for us to even be pure because of the things that we've fed our spirits. I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, like I said, I don't mind sharing the things that I deal with because I know that the things that I deal with, everybody else is, you know, a lot of other people are dealing with it as well. So I am an open book. Okay. And um, I know that God allows me to deal with certain things because I am there to be an example. I am there to share my story and hopes that it helps someone else. So if you've been battling in, in any way with whether or not you should be listening to something, then you may want to um, pray about it because the Holy Spirit probably has already been convicting you about it. Whether it's listening to music, whether it's certain movies that you're watching, um, whether it's certain television shows that you're watching where there is references of homosexuality or references of sexual um, things and it may be too much of that there where you can't even really enjoy the show or the movie and it's it's clearly not modest it's clearly impure then we need to make sure that we are guarding okay guarding what we watch guarding what we listen to and those doors there are, those are little small windows that the enemy will still use to climb on in and influence. Okay, guys. So, I hope that made sense. I always say that. I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. Because the things that I think in my mind, I try to, you know, speak what I'm, you know, with, with the Holy Spirit is placed in my spirit and in my mind to say and... Um, I want to make sure that it comes across the same way that the Holy Spirit is revealed because I want to completely remove, you know, me and I want the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you guys the way he wants it to be revealed. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to let you get back to your family and your cookout and your good food. And I'm about to go eat good. I just made some peach cobbler and some baked beans that I'm taking over to a friend's house with my kids. And we're just going to enjoy um, this family time. So I pray that you guys enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. And I will see you back here um, possibly tomorrow. All right. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>